good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started uh, with today's program. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to get together, have everybody come in for what we think um, is an industry needed uh, discussion on focused on uh, pig survivability. My name is Joel DeRucci. I work at Kansas State University in the swine extension area. Ooh, my face is on there. There we go. Uh, I wasn't expecting that one. All right. So um, I'm part of the project of, uh, with the pig survivability project. And after I do a little bit of a, a welcome, uh, Dr. Jason Ross is going to give a brief overview of why we're here, what's going on with a project that's uh, funded at a national level, focused on this area, working with uh, many of you and trying to help uh, work together to solve this industry area. Um, for this event, uh, we're super excited to host it. This is two years in the making. Uh, we were scheduled to have this a year ago and obviously couldn't at that time. Uh, we made a decision once we host this event, uh, it's in person, um, there's no virtual option. We are tape recording or we are recording the sessions. They'll be posted after the event sometime in about a month, month and a half is when we will put those up so we'll have all that information available. But what our goal is, was to get people here and have discussion. We think this is, was an important topic to have in person, face to face. And uh, in a little bit, I'll just quickly go through the program and kind of how we're set up uh, for, the, for the next day and a half. So, so more specifically, who's here? So as of this morning, I think there was 20 more people registered this morning, so we're about at 450 people total represents 25 different states, and uh, as of last night, it was 176 different business units, so production facilities, allied industry, um, and so we have a wide breadth of people that are invested in this area. I would hate to count the years of experience if we told all of us together focused on swine production, and so I think we all have something hopefully to offer uh, what we can come across with the next couple days. I'd like to first just go, if I could have my slides back, and, and talk about some of what, what the project itself, just real briefly. So this is a project that was funded by, partially by checkoff dollars, by our U.S. pork producers. Uh, Chris Hostetler was a, in, instrumental in helping get this pulled together. Also Tim Kurt at the Foundation for Food and Animal uh, research in, in, in uh, Washington, D.C. It's a co-funded project and really have to appreciate those two for having the vision to pull this together. We'd like to thank the rest of our sponsors. We kept uh, registration very reasonable. Uh, these conferences cost a lot to put on. and We have a number of, of sponsors that have helped us throughout the, uh, the two-day period and uh, many of you are here in attendance. We have uh, sponsors for all of our meals, for our breaks, as well as the reception tonight. And I'd like to give all those businesses a big round of applause for all their sponsorship to help make this event happen. So when we talk about survivability, um, there's been a lot of innovation over the years and, and we can get very frustrating. Probably in my career, I've been at, at K-State 20 years now on faculty. And probably working with, with any production system of any size, whether it's a very small producer or the largest, you can either have a very depressing meeting or one of the most energetic, exciting meetings when the metric of mortality comes up. And again, there's a lot of things we measure and there's a lot of numbers going to be talked about. But again, you talk about a number that either is exciting or very demoralizing for farm level all the way through managers, it can be this number. And if things are clicking, things are good. And if they're not, people, they're just morale, right? It's one of those that has the mental side that really weighs on people. But if we think over the years of biosecurity, weaning age, all in, all out, vaccine efficacy, and what we've been able to do there over the years, correct medication use, employee training, and all we do on the labor side from a skill set development. And that's, again, from everyday workers to all of ourselves. Everything in the health, nutrition, genetics areas, and many others. And so in the program itself, we have a lot of topics dealing with what we're going to have today in particular as well as tomorrow. Today we're having a number of talks on success and failures. And I, I'm not sure failures is the right word versus something that's not moving the needle. And one of the things, and Jason's going to talk about this next as well, one of our goals for this conference is for every one of us to think uh, and leave here with items that we need to either reevaluate back home 
a new idea that we got we want to test. In particular, when we say failures, it's maybe something we implemented three times ago because we keep implementing things, but we never generally get rid of anything. Is there things that we've come across through the discussions or you know that aren't moving the needle, that are taking capital investment and people investment to get done that we need to shift somewhere else? We only have so much of both. Where is our, where is our biggest efficiency? And so we think it's both. We need to figure out where to move the needle and not spend time on things that aren't. But we don't want to rescind in those either. And so and that's where, especially for our grad students, we talk all the time. No response is as important as getting a response, okay? And so if we test, and it can be you, a lot of on-farm research gets done or testing and we didn't change, that's as important as finding some so we don't continue to invest in areas that we shouldn't. And I think we need to make sure that we uh, keep our focus on that over the next two days as well. We can get really tired of the same issues, right? I mean, uh, for I'm in 20 years. Uh, I grew up on, a, on a, a swine farm in South Dakota, so I'm 46 years into this. When my parents put me in a playpen when they were uh, breeding and doing all the work at our farm. And so we can get tired and mentally tired of the same issues. Prolapses, stillborns, layons, fallback, the failure to fr thrive pigs, lameness, ruptures, DOAs twisted guts, all the things that cause our mortalities. From the health perspective, it's, it's, it's the same things a lot of times that we continually work on. We make improvements and then we can have rescissions. PERS, PED, circle, micro, strep, E. coli that's going on. Probably more people have dealt with that this last year, or it's certainly one of our topics that uh, gets brought up a lot. HBS, ileitis. The other one that's, uh, that's just classic, and if this was a sheep meeting, none of us would even be here, right? But uh, um, sudden death. We don't like sudden death in the sheep industry. It's just part of everyday life, right? And you move on. But again, the sudden death thing comes into play. Why did that healthy animal die, especially in sows or in any production phase? A lot of animals get characterized as sudden death, and we just simply don't know or we didn't have that part of the plan to investigate a little bit further. But the amount of sudden deaths of supposedly a healthy functioning animal and so where do we go with that so in the end what we want to do is pull together some of the industry uh, the, the international leaders and in your program what I want to just quickly do is just go through lay out the next day and a half so we're in this room for today this this entire day is main session so what we're we've done is have enough breaks we know we can get a little uh, fatigue being stuck in one room all day long but that's what we're doing today we have more rapid fire I say rapid fire they're half hour sessions they're not long talks we want the speakers to be short to the point let's get the information and then we have longer break times for some discussion uh, we have a good length of, of a lunch hour we have a panel discussion after our group this morning um, and then tomorrow uh, what we do is we start just down the hall. So for where you registered, instead of taking a right to come down here, you'll take a left and go down to the Blackstone rooms. And then there's two concurrent sessions going on. And in that, what we were able to do is highlight some of the re applied research that's been going on with this project over the last couple years. And so you have the opportunity to look at those breakout sessions and choose one of them. And then we have two sets that will take up the entire morning. And in that is where we want to have where we want to have the discussion. In each one of those, we have about either 45 minutes or an hour of group discussion. We have some guidelines of what we want to talk about within that. But this is a chance for you to, to contribute as well. And I don't knowing this group, we should have plenty of people wanting to visit. And if it runs dead, you're going to get a, a microphone handed to you to also <laughs> contribute to the discussion. So we think that those sessions will go quick. We know we're going to have some good discussion. But I encourage you to think about tomorrow, during today, to think about what are the things that have worked or haven't worked for yourselves. I know there is proprietary, all businesses, we're all in a competitive nature. But there's a lot of things in our industry who is very willing to share information and also share things that haven't worked that maybe some others are talking about or what you did. And so I want you to be thinking about what you can contribute tomorrow to the program as all the attendees, again, from what some of the information that comes along today as well. In this booklet, again, we have all of our sponsors. We have a bios on all the speakers. There's a place for notes if you need that. Um, in addition, um, you know, from a, from a logistical standpoint, restrooms, 
are either out right behind the wall on that side or from the registration desk or just down the, just, just off of that. Uh, break, uh, there's refreshments all day long outside. We know everybody's busy and have a lot of things going on. If you need to take calls, all that things, just step out. Um, uh, again, we just want you to be comfortable as much as possible uh, during this event. So with that, I'm going to turn uh, things uh, really over next to our next speaker, uh, Dr. Jason Ross. And uh, Jason is one of the PIs uh, uh, on this project. He's really the lead uh, of this project, helping keep all of us organized. And really for this conference itself, this is one, honestly, very small piece of, of what we're trying to do over a five-year period. And I'd really like to thank our planning committee. Um, it was Jason. Uh, Chris Rodemaker had a large part, John Patience, and the linchpin of this whole thing is uh, Stacy Matchin. Stacy is, is one of our uh, program directors for this project. She's the one uh, that's helped organize this. Uh, she has the, been the one that's helped keep all of us organized and pulled together. And, and I'm not sure I see Stacy in the room. She's maybe out back. Oh, there she is right there. Stacy, thank you very much. Let's give her a big round of applause. So for Jason, uh, Jason's a professor of physiology and associate professor at, at Iowa State University. In 2008, he joined the faculty there, and he's in an Anderson Endowed Professorship in Physiology. In 2015, Jason was appointed director of the Iowa Pork Center, and now he keeps his passion for the industry, driven by working for higher education and cooperation with industry partners. Jason's really been a, um, a tremendous leader of this project. Um, he has a, such a connection with so many uh, uh, industry, uh, on-farm production systems that he's able to do research with grad students and others at Iowa State. And Jason's going to give us a little brief overview of the project, and then we're going to get into the talks of the survivability uh, conference itself. So with that, let's welcome Jason to the podium. All right, thank you, Joel. It's a pleasure to be here, and, and we're just a lot of gratitude that you're all here as well. And uh, there has been a lot of times, Joel has put a significant amount of time into, the, into this conference, and between him and Stacy, it's, it's, it's turned out really well, and we're just really thankful that you're here and that you're a part of it. So hopefully some slides are popping up here, and I can share with you a little bit about how we got here, how we structured this project, you know, how we prioritized the topics that we prioritized, so that you have a little bit of an idea of how the different investigators have approached uh, their research projects and how we came about to uh, selecting and identifying speakers for this conference as well. So one of the things that I want to point out is the swine industry, if you look at the progress in the last 50 years, the swine industry has been remarkable. If you look at 1970, we used to run around 9 million sows of an inventory, and we were producing around 1,500 pounds of uh, pork uh, per sow per year. Now our inventory is closer to 6 million and we're producing around 4,500 pounds of pork per sow per year. That's a tremendous story. That's a 200% a, a improvement in efficiency. I can't think of too many uh, industries in the United States or in the world that have made that degree of progress in the last 50 years. And that's important, right? And progress is important because in 50 years ago we had 180 million people in the United States. And now we have 330 million and they consume 10 more grams of animal protein per day per person. And so there's a demand for it. And we still live in a society that's globally protein insufficient. And in the U.S., we still have a, a high percentage of kids that don't have their protein meets, needs uh, met every day. So while this is a tremendous story and tremendous progress, we've got to continue making progress as an industry. And one of those areas where there's an opportunity to be more efficient in our production is through improving pig livability and reducing mortality. And so it was actually about four or five years ago that Chris Hostetler and the Animal Science Committee at the time, and I know many of that Animal Science Committee are represented in the audience today, had the vision that we need to start investing more research dollars into projects that are focused on reducing uh, piglet and, and production mortality. Because at the time, 30% estimated, 30% of every pig that was born was not being harvested, was not producing food um, in our production systems. 
And so that was part of our establishment of our problem solving cycle, right? Recognizing that that uh, issue exists, moving forward to you know, monitoring and benchmarking the problem, identifying potential causes, testing hypotheses, developing and uh, deploying mitigation strategies, um, and then dissemination and implementation of those, of those strategies. And so that's really been kind of the cycle that we think about in the projects that we prioritize um, with the emphasis of uh, creating and disseminating information and knowledge that can be used by industry and industry stakeholders to improve pig livability. So this is the team. I'll just click and get everybody up here. When we started pulling this together, we had, uh, uh, I think around 17, 18 different faculty members that were part of the, the PI team. And so we have veterinary medicine, reproduction, economics, microbiology, nutrition, genetics, welfare, toxicology, uh, just a team that represented um, you know, diverse backgrounds that have think about the problems that we interact with and face in the industry with different ideas. And I think that's a key point that I wanna make today and I hope that you embrace during the conference is to think about our problems that we see in the industry or opportunities that we see in the industry differently, right? Embrace it a little bit differently and try to think about it differently um, while we're looking for solutions and opportunities. So I couldn't be ple more pleased with the team that we have. I think we've also had a great graduate student team, as I'll show you in a minute. Um, the Iowa State Swine Extension Field Specialists, Russ Buchan, Dave Stender, Matt Ramosier, Mark Storley, Colin Johnson have all been involved and are, are also doing some demonstration projects in the state of Iowa. So the team's been growing and, and we're very pleased with the people that are involved with it. Another critical component to the oversight of our project is our advisory board. When we established the advisory board and we proposed it in the proposal, um, you know, we, we wanted to have representation from the funding sources, which is Chris Hostetler and Tim Kurt. We also wanted to have representation from production systems. Um, so you can see we've got several producers and decision makers for, for different companies. And we have, you know, nutritionists, veterinarians, um, you know, just a representation across uh, geneticists, representation across the industry. And we meet once a year uh, with this group and talk about our projects, talk about what we're planning to do, get feedback. Um, and, and what I would say is at this meeting, now we're all part of the consortium, right? And so there is an expectation that we want feedback from everybody that's in here. If you have ideas, this is the place to discuss them around the idea of pig livability and improving, uh, improving survivability in the industry. So the objective of the grants was to uh, identify causative factors that contribute to mortality in the industry and develop and disseminate strategies that could, uh, and information that can be used to improve pig survivability, right? With an overall goal that we could reduce at the end of the five years, could reduce that 30 to 35% by one percentage point for each year, right? So that's an aggressive goal, but we thought we we're gonna put it out there, right? And, and that's what we're gonna pursue. So there's four different objectives of this project that that team was broken out into, one of which is uh, identifying managing attitudes and economics, right? We need to understand what the cost of mortality is, and Lee Schultz is gonna talk to you about that in a little bit. Uh, the management attitudes, uh, Nick Gabler and his student Kayla Evans uh, are working towards, uh, um, not Kayla Evans, I'm sorry, Kayla, um, are working towards, um, you know, developing and, and deploying a survey of different late stages of production. And right now we have roughly 200 participants have contributed to that survey. So we'll send information out to the rest of, uh, of this after the conference to try to get additional involvement in that survey. Um, then another specific objective was focused around causes of mortality on the sow farm, both within sows as well as uh, free wean mortality. A big part of the team is focused in that area. Um, reducing wean to finish mortality is another section uh, that we have a team focused on, a subset of the team, and then obviously the extension and outreach objective. So that's a, a major component as, as Joel's uh, alluded to, Joel's been the leader of that, of that effort and this is a big component being at this meeting um, and gathering together. So this is kind of our project management plan that we proposed um, you know, six months before the project was funded. And so you can kind of see how we prioritize different objectives, having the three different research objectives integrated uh, with the extension and outreach objective and, uh, you know, reporting back to the stakeholders, the funders, the advisory board, 
but also interactions with what we call the Pig Livability Consortium. And that represents investigators, collaborators, staff, graduate students, scientists, allied industry partners, producer partners, um, commodity groups, essentially everyone in this room, right? Everyone in this room is now part of this project and, and engaged in the project as part of this consortium um, and part of the team that's helping to drive that, that uh, drive improvement in, in pig livability. So one of the things that we've really placed a premium on uh, in this project is the enduring impact of the project. Right, so a lot of times you, you have a research project, a research grant, and when you complete the objectives and the proposal, you know, you have the answer that you were asking the question to. We placed a, a significant premium on the development of future trainees for the industry. And so this is uh, the graduate students and postgraduate students that have been trained or have worked on this project so far um, at Purdue, Kansas State, and Iowa State. They've all been involved at many different levels. Many of them have conducted their research projects in commercial systems, so thank you. For those of you that have commercial systems that partnered with us on this project and allowed us into your farms and facilities to do research, thank you. That couldn't be accomplished. This project could not be accomplished without that. And the training for the students wouldn't be near as rich um, for the industry as e either if they didn't have those opportunities as well. Another thing that we did was our internship opportunity, and this is something that's continued to grow. Erica Johnson was our first intern in, in 2019, and um, the second year we had two interns, and the third year we've had four interns, and that's something that we've, we've uh, really, you know, take a lot of pride in because these are students that were undergraduate students when they got involved with the project, and every one of them so far that's, that's graduated from their undergraduate degree has gone on to graduate school to work in swine uh, areas, either nutrition or reproduction or sustainability. So very pleased about that and, and you know, that's the kind of the enduring effect that we want this proposal to have and wanted this grant and this project to have that will live uh, well beyond uh, this project. Additional to that, we all at universities have undergraduate students that we get involved and some of these will go on to work in the swine industry, some of them may not go on to work in the swine industry, but in the different projects that we've ran, our estimate right now is that 44 undergraduate students have been involved with a project that's supported by this proposal. Um, so hopefully those are also individuals that are, that are being trained and capable of having an impact in your production system and in the industry eventually. So just to elaborate a little bit more on the extension and outreach effort, uh, we have the website piglivability.org. Um, but I would also, you know, where we, we post videos on research findings, short clips. Um, we have uh, fact sheets that we post. We have, you know, conference materials from this conference will go up on that website. And then the other thing that we push out every, every month, we have an episode to our Pig X podcast, which is in its second season right now. And those monthly podcasts are around 20 to 30 minutes. And every one of them is focused on some aspect of improving pig survivability. So... If you want to pull out your phone and go to iTunes or Spotify and subscribe to that, that then you get a notification every time we every time we put a new one out there. So, I'll wrap up here, but really just want to reiterate why we're here today. Um, number one is to learn something from each other. Everybody comes in with a different set of experiences, a different set of problems, and different sets of opportunities that they can capture in the industry. Um, the other thing too, right? Learning is is only good if you do something with it, and um, we need to learn to adopt, learn and then adopt and implement new ideas. And so that's really something I would just challenge the, the audience with and, and also challenge our team, right? What are we going to learn from today that we're going to go back and take into the, the next phase of the research and the remainder year, remaining years of the grant? What are, what are the ideas that we're going to walk away from from what we heard today from, from industry stakeholders? And then ultimately, right, we need to do something different and, and or better. Right, and, and so, you know, I put some definitions up here, right? There's discovery and innovation. Companies talk about discovery and innovation all the time. And so discovery is really when you're learning something or finding something for the first time, right? You just make a discovery. But innovation is really referring to something new or a change made to an existing product or idea. And so I would just really challenge you that, to really, you know, recognize that now at the beginning and challenge yourself to think differently and challenge yourself to walk away with a different idea 
uh, that you didn't have when you got here um, that when you're leaving that you can go back and implement something. So as Albert Einstein said, we, we cannot uh, uh, fix our problems with the same way of thinking that we were using when we got into them. So, um, so I'll stop there. I just want to say thanks again to the sponsors of this meeting, but also that was a representation of many of the production partners across the U.S. that we partnered with and, um, and that we couldn't do this project without.